So we're going like, is two plus two four on this one? The call came in at six thirty in the morning. He called me direct. Uh, so they did not take it very long. This video shows a deputy trying to lie about driving while under the influence and pretending he didn't realize he had struck an electric box and two trees. On September 19th, 2019, Deputy Glenn Barouet calls Sergeant Prihoda on his personal cell phone to inform him that he had been in an accident while on duty the night before. Barouet told Prihoda that he had not been injured and had merely hit a curb. When Prihoda arrived, he found the front corner of the car to be mangled in such a way that did not match Barrowhead's story. So I drive out and then I can't find the scene. So like, this happened at like 2 in the morning and then he slept in his car and called us, so we don't know. Okay. So uh, he's over there. Seam impaired? No. I didn't, uh, he, I had long conversations with him, no slurring the words, no like, okay. uh, he was walking, we walked the whole thing, he wasn't uh, steady on his feet, no. I said gate. Him. No, nothing like oh. that. So everything was good, but I was just talking to LT, and I was like, you know what? It might have been fucking this happened at two in the morning. He slept in his car, and it called us at six thirty two. So. Uh, that's just a. It's, you know, that's just the experience kicking in, going, huh? It's yeah, not right. Somebody's here. trying to cover his yeah, ass somehow. Someone's I don't, I don't trying know. to cover their ass. Is it just because? And he doesn't have a lot of nine hundred one. The two officers at the scene are already suspicious of Deputy Borowitz's statement. The timing seems off. And while he doesn't seem impaired currently, plenty of time may have passed for enough alcohol to have left his system to make him appear normal. Do you have the um, vehicle info? Is any of the vehicle info attached? I have pictures of it. I can send to you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. CSI. Yeah. I can just text you. You guys have cameras uh, on this road? No. Um, the only one would probably be that intersection over there, and I'm assuming that's that's also Delta Shores and Casumas. And you guys would know <laughs> if there's somebody called in, somebody... I can text that to you, too. Yeah, that would be good. Somebody uh, uh, calling in a reckless driver or a deuce driver or somebody just hit and they just took off. <laughs> His sergeant's coming over and he's going to have it. So. Does he work for you guys or yeah. for uh, uh, gangs? He's over. Didn't yep. <laughs> Has he been working a lot? I'll get his statement, but I just yeah. kind of want to see what, if there's like any, like, he video work for us, so he, he works in gangs, so yeah. I don't know. The Could gang you? detective sergeant's coming over, and we had a conversation, and he's gone through some hard times and stuff, so yeah, I don't know. If, don't put that in my statement, but I'm just, you know. No, no, no that's, just, like, that's just for Something's me. up, I don't know what it is. Just look at, whatever that was, that had to hurt there. That that's that. Hurt. That's, that's a piece of wood from... Do you want pictures of all the car too? Like the stuff that's not damaged? Oh yeah, that would be that would be great. What um what tow yard did it go to? It's at Central right now. Our central station, 7065th Street. Because it's a county vehicle. Parker like where has it been on the 51st Street? One uh 7065th Street Expressway. Right there at Florin. This is gonna be a mess. This is a nightmare. I'm just going to ask dispatch if there are any reports of a 5-0. Yeah, that's fine. So. Uh, yeah, he's over there. He has driver's license in New Hampshire. Okay, perfect. Uh, where did he go? So, he must have left the road here. He's lucky he didn't hit this thing. Uh, I think he, uh, this is where he left, right here, continued on that trajectory right there. So how the fuck would it, if you're reaching down, you hit your phone, you hit the curve, you correct. And take out two of these trees. Did he overcorrect? <laughs> Maybe, maybe he went. Maybe he went this way. Right, jerk left, jerk right. I don't think he knew how to correct. I think he just continued on. All right. Um. Can I get your name, sir? Yeah, it's Sergeant Prohoda, Brian Prohoda. B R I A N. Yeah, and then 
P-R-E, H-I-D-A, P-R-E. So Officer H-I-D-A. Kelly, how's your day going? <laughs> when I saw this come out, I thought it was just, I looked at the call, I was like, oh, this is going to be simple, like a <laughs> 2901, yeah. like a double 901, yeah. and you're a patrol sergeant? Yeah. Phone number? Yes. Phone number? 916? Yeah, should I use this one? You can use whichever one. Do you have a badge number? Uh, 93. 93. I can always call your non-emergency number and yeah, get a hold of you. 74. 05? 15. 15. You can use the 7065th Street Expressway. Address? Yeah. Alright, I'm going to go just get his statement, but obviously no signs of intoxication. No, no signs of impairment. Walked it. And he said it Remember, came out at what? We work for the sheriff's department. We're not as good at that as you guys. Plus, we worked at jail for a long time, so our noses are good. I got a call at 6.24 a.m. Saying he had been involved in a solo car accident. And that he was at Laguna. And what was the name of that street? The major? Houseman. 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 Spelled funky. H-A-U-S-M-A-N, I think. Two S's. Or two S's in there. Hosman. Hosman, yeah. Is it, yeah. I think it's two N's, too. Uh, and then his car was found at Hausman and Vox, V-A-U-X, with some damage to the front and a flat front right tire. And there was side damage to the rear passenger side tire. Like, you could tell it hit a curb. Now you can oh, the it. rear passenger? Yeah, like, so on the side of the tire, you could tell it hit a curb based on the That's probably that. Yeah, the discoloration. There is more damage that can be accounted for by just hitting a curb. It is easy enough to pick out his trail where he plowed through the trees, which is unlikely to occur without impairment or an outside force, such as another car, or swerving wildly to avoid a pedestrian. On the sidewalk. Airbags? No airbags deployed. Uh, no camera in the car? No camera in the car. In our CSI, if you need more, we'll probably give you the yeah. too. Okay. And then I talked to his sergeant, Gangs, and he would probably want me to keep that confidential that he going through some problems and stuff. So he's going to have a talk with him, make sure that he's fit. Um, well, make sure that he gives an accurate statement and that what happened actually, uh, to be honest about it. Exactly so you said this happened at Laguna and, and Hossman? But then later... That's where he said he was, and that's where the truck was. Okay. And that he didn't know where the scene but he said it's somewhere off of the Sumas in the city. Uh, but he just went off the road. But based on the damage to the front of the car, I was like, okay, we need to buy the seat. So uh, his dad had already responded. His dad lives just a few blocks away. And I understand he's living with his dad now. At least part-time based on his struggles, which I don't want to put all his business out there for you know. Travel. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm but not anyway, his dad lives around the corner, and I think he's staying there. Uh, yeah, has no bearing on what, okay. on this particular yeah. incident, yeah. other than give him a state of mind that maybe there was a substance involved in it. You know, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think it. Um, so, I responded to the scene. The tow truck was already around. Our crime scene investigators were around, and I wanted to make sure there was no property damage or injuries, because he's like, oh, I just went off the curb. I'm like, okay, well, you got to show me where it is. Uh, and so his, here, his right? dad has already responded over there, so I followed him and his dad from way over there to here. And then we stopped up there first, and we walked up. I'm like, oh, dad, see anything. Got back in, he's like, oh, there it is. Okay. But I kind of think, in my just personal opinion, it's like, you knew when you drove by and saw the trees down, right? Yeah. We were going that, we were going that way, and then we flipped the U-turn way down there. All right, something just, you know, this, the cop sense is like something serious. So, yeah. yeah. So, anyway. All right, I appreciate yeah, it. No. I'll take it from here and okay. I'll get his statement and then yeah. we'll get it on. I don't know, is property damage a tree? City tree? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yeah. And I think the box is the main thing, right? Yeah. Like you ripped that box, sheared that box off the stand. And not do all that damage oh, to it. some value there. I, I just don't Son of a bitch. It's, it's probably problem. city works, right? Yeah. yeah. So. All right. All right. Good luck. Uh, his sergeant will be out here soon. I'm suspicious that this didn't occur at 624. <laughs> no, no, obviously not. That but was, uh, we're like, well, my theory is 
driving home drunk at 2 in the morning, go off the road because you passed out or whatever, get back, just keep going because you just said, holy fuck, and then then your car gets disabled, and then you sleep in it, and then well, call, call and it in the uh, morning. Right? Yeah. So or, uh, that's just a theory. Or that's work late, and you work late, yeah. fall asleep, or a heavy workload. Yeah. Heavy so, workload. I'll, I'll try and figure that out. Yeah, so he's very, he's a detective, been a detective a long time in gangs, and he is good at his job, so. Yeah. And yeah, and he wants to be at home sometimes, right, when you don't do a divorce. <laughs> so maybe he just worked out late. Yeah. But Man, I, I don't know, but we'll, well enough to we'll figure it to out. Any of this personal life stuff. So. None, none of that matters to this. No. Nah. But man, he's so super lucky he did not hit this uh, this light pole. Barwood has damaged an electrical box and knocked down two trees, which are all city property. While the officer's gut instinct is that Barwood was drunk, they try to throw out the other theories about what might have happened. However, if it had simply been exhaustion, Barwood would have called it in immediately, which strengthens the case for him having been drunk at the time. They also keep mentioning difficulties in his personal life, and while they want those issues to remain private, they cannot since Barwood has allowed them to affect his job. One Bravo 5-6. Right. Do we have any reports of a vehicle 505-ing or 502 on Kasunas? Time frame might be uh, zero two in the morning. Good morning, sir. Sorry we have to meet under these circumstances. So, there's my driver's license. Obviously your day is not going as as expected. <laughs> so I didn't go to a child abuse case that just okay, came out, so, so this is better. Um, what's your current address, sir? Um, right now I'm living, going through a wonderful divorce right now. Mm -hmm. so Sorry to hear that. Living with mom and dad, which is awesome when you're 37 years old. Hey, <laughs> I lived with my parents until I was 27. So. Oh, I found someone when I was 22, and I did pretty well for myself until now. What's your cell phone number, sir? My personal phone, if you want my work phone, I give that to you as well. I'll take the other one. It works out. Alright. Uh, do you happen to know the uh, license plate of the vehicle? No. Make? Ford, Ford F-150. I want to say about 2008. White color. I think it's about 08. It's got almost 200,000 more on it. White? Yes. How long have you worked for the Sheriff's Department? 16 years ago. Counting down the days, but then you start the divorce, you're like, oh, maybe I should stick around a few more years. Make up for first potential take about thirty. Did the airbags deploy? No. Uh, do you know the insurance company in well? I don't know whoever the county uses. The county group. Do you guys know who your insurance company is, or who you guys are insured through for your vehicles? I'm sorry. Do you guys know who uh, the vehicles are insured through? They're self-insured. Chattanooga County. Okay. Yeah. 
Where are you wearing your seatbelt? Where are you on your phone? I'm trying to reach for my phone. Have you been drinking? Any drugs, alcohol, no? Have you been working a lot? Yeah. One Bravo 5-6, can I get my report number? You. All right, so kind of run me through what what happened. Driving eastbound about 55 miles an hour. Phone fell. Pushed down the gravel, looked down. Hit a curb. Got out. I thought I just hit a curb. I didn't realize it was got some trees or anything like that. I literally thought I hit a curb. Kept driving and the car quit driving. Okay. Um, so you went off the road. About where those cars are. Right. And then you continued. Did you hear anything? Any loud noises? It's just me hitting the curb. Okay. We're, uh... So you hit the curb. You're on You're on the curbside now. And then did you, like, correct? Did you yeah, actually correct get it? As soon as I realized it, I corrected it. How is, your, how is the truck still drivable? You are so lucky you didn't hit that pole. I know. Or this one over here. Either the fire hydrant or God knows what else. Alright. He's spent. And how fast do you think you're going? About 55. This is a bold lie on Barwood's part. He claims he only heard the bump from hitting the curb, but there is no way he could have missed the sounds from hitting the electric box and not just one, but two trees. And when you dropped your phone, did it land directly in front of you, or in the passenger seat, or? At my feet, so I kind of reached down to grab it, and it was stupid on my part. How do you like gangs? I love it. I've been doing it a little too long, though. <laughs> I've been there for almost six years. Time to move on. What would you go into after this? I probably look to my mom. Well, honestly, just... I'm gonna ride it out until the next test and try and promote and get back to the more normal schedule. So when you dropped your phone and you hit the curb, did you know? Did you like look up or by the time you looked up, by you were time already I looked up. I was correcting and coming back onto the roadway. Right. And you didn't see like you hitting all these trees. No. <laughs> okay. Or the electrical box? Did you even know you hit it? I thought I hit a curb. Okay. It happened so quick, it was only a matter of a few seconds. And so, you corrected, you got back on the road, and you traveled all the way to, where, where did you stop like, at? House and in the Boulevard. And then, the car literally stopped working. Oh. The transmission wasn't engaging, I was like, what the fuck? I got out, I was like, oh, apparently I took out more than just the curb. And that's in Elk Grove. H-A-U-S-S-M-A-N-N. H-A-U-S-S-M-A-N-N. And Vox? Yeah. And uh, what time did this happen, do you think? What time? 6.15-ish. 6.15? Today? Yeah. What time did I call the sergeant? Oh, I'll get you. I'll get you a good Around have you been sleeping in your car have you, earlier, yeah. earlier prior to driving? Yeah. And where were you sleeping at? Delta Shores or in front of my house? In front of your house? I'm no longer allowed to live in. Where's that one at? Is your wife taking the house in the divorce? I don't know. She locked me out. She changed the locks and all that kind of stuff. But I hate not being at home. You know. You're sleeping out front of your house, mm -hmm. and you're traveling across, or, so you came on Kasumas mm -hmm. to get, are you heading to work, or? Okay. Heading to your parents' house. I'm just one of those paranoid guys who changes the way he drives home every night. You know? Nothing wrong with that. So I sometimes will go out of my way. <laughs> and so, what do you think, five o'clock? 5.30, 5.45 is when this happened, and then you called the sergeant? Uh, 
Call it a 6615. 6615. Did I call it? Sorry, 624 when I called it. So. Do you have anything else to add? Okay. Um, is that your day off? Or do you have work today? I gotta work today. Do you have work today? Um, to tighten this up. What's the best place to reach you at if I have to come down and talk My cell phone. To you? Just your cell phone? Yeah. And uh, what station do you work at? Out Our on? office is in Rancho. Rancho? What's the address for that? 10151. 10151. Croydon, C R O Y D O N. What is it? C R O Y D O N. Croydon, Way. You, uh, I'd probably take today off after that. <laughs> but, um, how are you getting to work? Are you going with one of these guys? Oh, that's my dad right there in the Silver Central. Okay. I'll figure out how to get to work later on. Okay. Uh, I don't have any other questions for you. Cool. Um, do you have any questions for me? The interaction is friendly and casual which is a far cry from what a civilian could expect in the same situation. The average person wouldn't be allowed to go home. Someone that had done this much damage while under the influence would have been spoken to much more harshly than this, and they could expect to be taken to the jail at the very least. Do you need the report number? No. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they'll ask about that. Oh, even better, you have a card. Uh, there we go. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything to add, please let me know. That's pretty much it. Okay. Well, I don't have anything else for you. I'm just going to talk to your partners real quick, and you're okay. free to leave, all right? All right. Cool. i got to stick around for my box to get here. So. All right. <laughs> Be safe. All over. Hey, Glenn, we're going to need the keys to that. Oh, I don't know what you need. <laughs> See you, brother. All right, have a good one, sir. Okay. Okay, let me, let me uh, ask him right now. No, no, I'm talking about SPD. Let me ask them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm standing, I'm standing with him. But, uh, but we were getting, he was getting, a, uh, SP was getting a statement from the dad. Got yeah, a little sidetracked, but. All right. We'll get it. Yeah, we'll get it from him in just a second. All right, bye. Yes, sir. Has. I can get one yeah. here. Yeah, can you ask him to? Yeah. This yeah. is probably going to be more work. So here's the real question. I just let my sergeant know about the paths to come on down. Uh, do you want me to read him the admonishment and all the other stuff pertaining to DUI? Do you want me to do a full-blown DUI packet? Because I don't asking, see any they're asking, signs. They're just asking for a pass. Okay. I mean, and if he refuses, then, then we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay. Just a voluntary pass. All right. Just given the situation and yeah, circumstances, yeah. we got, I mean, you're already aware of LPR, he was in the area at like 2.30, so... Oh, okay. So that's what, <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know all that information for sure, but that was what. It was, okay. That's the in, in, intel we're getting right now. Is that this is But anyway, just well, let me go grab Dad's statement, and then as soon as my sergeant comes down with the pads, we will have him just 
submit to a voluntary one. Okay. I mean, I could read him the admonishment, and if he says no, he says no. But I'm actually, I've actually never worked a on duty. Well, I actually asked if we could go over to Central to do this, and uh, they said, yeah. and they're on their way. They're, yeah, they yeah. want their scene. Chief said no and wants them staying at the, at the scene. Uh, we technically already left and then came back, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, plus, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, no, normally when we do these, we do them in a room where there's not at all a rookie who's there. <laughs> yeah. But oh well. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, let me go grab Dad's statement real quick. I got sidetracked because our city worker came out, but I'll go get that. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm getting one indication on one of those, so I'm a little concerned that maybe we are hot. There. Okay. So, um, just make sure no one's messing around right here. Okay. Uh, I got another guy coming. I'm going to give him a call, make sure he's coming out, and because he knows where this is powered from for sure. Yeah, one of it's probably one of these. Yeah, big it's, well, those are landscaping ones there, so, and those are control pumps. All right, well, let me get I know right. what to look for, so. Okay. But, you can have a report from here? Yeah, there? let me go grab someone's statement real quick, sure, and then I'll be right back I'll with you, all right? Uh, your dad's still sitting in the yep. uh, uh -huh. Centra. All right. Oh no. Just hang. Just hang tight with your partner over there. None of the officers seem to be taking any of this very seriously, which is deeply concerning. It makes one wonder how often something like this occurs in this department. Barrowitz's father is waiting to take his son home, and he might knowingly or inadvertently shed some light on what happened. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sorry we have to meet under these circumstances. I agree. Um, so how were you notified of the accident? When did, did he call you first? No, no, I called him. Right, so how did you know that he got in an accident? I called him and he said he was at uh, Houseman and uh, so of course we were worried. Did you want to Step out so that way I can talk to you real quick. So I'm just I'm I'm just wondering, uh, so like what what got you concerned enough to call? Well, because he's he's call? been he's been staying with us, he's going through right. messy doors and all that kind of stuff. So of course, you know, as parents we worry. Yeah, yeah. And you wake up, first thing you do is, you know, look outside to see if the, the, the vehicle is out there, and it uh -huh. wasn't. What time did you, uh, I used to get up? up at, I usually get up at 5.45, I went to the bathroom, and that was it. Uh, That's the same today? It. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I went and looked out the window, and then, of course, I said, uh, you know, do I call him, do I call him? You know, he might be... Because the last we heard, he was serving search warrants or something like that. And that's so, what he, that's what he told. That's what he said. Uh, it was okay. Like late last night. Uh, well, last night at like I don't know what he sends his mother a text saying that you know he's going to be late or he called or one of the two saying he was going to be late. So we assume okay he's late. Some sometimes oh. it's you know two o'clock. Sometimes it's it's later. Well, I mean, uh, so yesterday. So yesterday, did he text you saying that he was going to be late? No, I think he talked to his mother on the telephone. Okay. And, uh, and because, you know, like I said, we were worried. And then I looked out, wasn't there, hesitated, waited to see, you know, and then finally typed and said, you know, where are you? Uh -huh. You know, kind of thing. And, and, uh, and, and then I called after, uh, 10 minutes after. Did you get a response? Yeah, I did. I mean, uh, when you said, where are you, did you get a response? Yeah, I, text he message? Said, I think he said he was close by. I can I can look if you okay. want. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I texted him. There was no answer. I called. Okay, what so time did you no, text him? There was no... Uh, it's a 
608. 608? Uh-huh. And you asked, um, what did you, what did the text message say? Well, I just asked, where are you? Okay. And then no response, and then apparently I called after that. And when you called him, you got a hold of him? Yes. And do you remember what he said at all? What? No, I really don't. But basically, uh, I think he said uh, the, the truck, you know, the truck's dead. Okay. So he said he hit something. There we he uh he didn't know where he was even though you guys you guys used to live over off of where he was no no he knew where he was but i i don't remember oh, okay. the name of the street yeah yeah, yeah. you know we lived up didn't house me connected connected somehow, the so okay that's more me all right Anything else? That's about it. Did, uh, then, you know, where, you know, did he seem what disoriented? Or? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. While Barwood's father didn't give any overt information, his story does throw more suspicion on his son. His concern over Barwood's whereabouts shows that it was unusual behavior for him to be out all night, which puts a hole in the theory that he just pulled over to sleep after overworking himself. Because that's, that's the first thing we worry about. Yeah. Is, you know, if, if uh, something else is, is going on. And, and, yeah. You know, so try to, look him, try to look him dead in the eye and talk to him and figure out, you know, what's going on. So, is he a heavy drinker? No. Does he, have you seen him drink in excess? No. He, he, he had recently gone through uh, an through, uh, uh, inpatient thing, but that was from PTSD. Okay, so, that's completely different. Yeah, right. Um, right. And he's, he, you know, he attends, he attends AA. Oh, he does? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, good enough. But uh, uh, he hasn't. You know. When did he, do you know when he started last AA? Like, when did he start? Has it been like a long time thing or relatively short? It's been quite a while. Quite a while. Give, years, months? Well, uh, the PTSD thing uh, was, I guess, it would be considered a conjunction with, but it wasn't for okay. alcohol. Okay, it wasn't for alcohol. But, uh, you know, it, it so easily, maybe a year and a half prior. To okay. That. Was he in the military? Yeah. Straight out of college into the system. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I get your name, sir? Date of birth, sir. Uh, and you live off of, and a good cell phone number for you. Uh, mine is okay. If I have any questions, I'll give you a call. Um, again, sorry we have to meet in these yeah, circumstances, I, I but, but I'm glad your son's okay. It could have been a lot different yep. had he hit that pole. Yeah. So, um, just waiting on my sergeant. Whatever they're going whatever they're doing. They're I, doing. I don't know what they're doing. So. Yeah. I'm just a city city cop. They're the county. So I'm gonna back up. So. Yeah, sure. How'd you get in gangs? How'd you get into gangs? Uh, when I worked patrol, I did a lot of like gang validation stuff like that, and I just kept applying over and over. And I applied like four times before I finally got picked up. All right. But it was a, it's a good job. You love it. Are you interested in it? I am. My wife would kill me if. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If I did. Well, what about the get team or something like that? Uh, it's gang enforcement team, yeah. same thing. Uh, I mean, they're not as bad as I got the gang detectives. The gang detectives get called out. Yeah. 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 Ye
let me go talk to this uh, energy guy and we'll see what we can what we can do. All right. Okay. Just hang tight for me. All right. Yeah. Oh my God, my day is going great. Yeah, we're good. Uh, still waiting for my sergeant to answer. He hasn't raised me over the air, so. If anything, apparent. so his dad says that he's been attending AA for uh, PTSD, like it's in conjunction with. Um, which I thought was interesting, but I don't smell anything. I don't see anything with his eye. I, if anything, I... I'm not DRE expert or anything, but I would most likely say this just doesn't make sense. I don't know, but let me see what my sergeant said, and we'll. This is sergeant's the only ones with the gas. Yeah, and our DUI teams, but they're not working right now. No, you're good. Barwood still has not had his blood alcohol tested, and the officers seem satisfied by the fact that they can't smell anything on his breath. This is something that is easily covered up, and they should know better than to take that as any kind of proof. And as you can clearly see, the tree has been completely knocked over. There is no way a sober person could have hit it without realizing it. Sorry, this is taking so long. I'm no, 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 we got time. The sergeant actually works out. We, the we, sergeant's stone. We don't have passes in our car, so if we, if I had a pass, I would okay. do it. But just waiting for my sergeant. He says he's on his way. But we check. I just go toward Guvea. I know. Shelter called me. He's like, "You need him or not?" And I, I said, "Yeah, keep him coming because we don't know that this is going to work out." Just in case, just in case your sergeant says, nah, we're not going to get involved in that. Anything like that. Let me call the bed. I got a phone call right now. I got it. Hello, sergeant. Hello, sergeant. Sorry, I'm the, the welfare check? No, we have not yet. I'm gonna, I was in the middle of taking measurements, but I'll make it up right now. Um... 
Yes, sir. No, I did not. Um, I think it's more of the paths is for their own internal um, process that they're going to possibly pursue. I have the lieutenant here if you want to speak to him. Yes, I do. I can make up the. I can text dispatch right now and uh, have them make up the call. Okay. Of course. Bye bye. All right, he's on his way down. Uh, he's on his way. Hey, Derek. Uh, and I'm gonna make up that call for the welfare check. Sergeant's in route. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to go make up that welfare call, okay. and we'll have one of our 4C, or if not, I'll just go and handle it myself, because I kind of know what's going on. Yeah, and I think I said that she, I know she works full-time, so she's she's not aware that he was in the driveway all night, so I don't know. But Father says him. that he, uh, he has, he texted, Father says that they taught that his wife, or his mother talked to him and said he was working late last yesterday. He gets up this morning. The father gets up this morning, looks out the window, doesn't see the car, texts him, no answer. Uh, after 10 minutes or so, gives him a call. Um, he says, hey, I've been in an accident. I crashed. My car's dead. Um, Ask where you're at. He says where they're at. Dad goes over there and Finds them at the scene with the, with the truck. All that will be written in statements. How's your guys' day going? Uh, <laughs> well, between SED and everybody else, search one. You know, they haven't called me one time. To do a Let me get you your report it's number. Real quick. Yeah, that's it's great. <laughs> Apparently, everybody seems to want to point the finger in another direction of responsibility for that, but I did find that wire on the top. I found the breaker, okay. I shut it off. I'm going to safe everything off and lock that out. And it won't be hurt. All right. That doesn't control any of the lights, cameras? No, this is only for the underground pipes, and it's, it can go without for a while, and it does not control any of their signals, lighting, or anything. Cool. That means I won't be back out here for an accident. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we can't say that for sure. Don't jinx me. Well, apparently it's not the lighting that causes these accidents. <laughs> it's the trees. Yeah. Whatever they're doing while they're driving. With all of the damage, it isn't surprising that the paperwork is taking a while since several departments will have to be notified. The sergeant is on his way, and it seems like this incident has to be scrutinized for all the wrong reasons. Rather than holding Barwood to a higher standard, the tone this takes is that of people looking for loopholes to minimize the chances of Barwood being made accountable for his actions. Five, four, six, so I heard you guys called it in the city. Did, did, they, did they say anything? I just did dispatch and I said let city know so that's that. when they came out. Because I actually just heard you on the scanner. Oh. Because I, I, I have the city radio. I always listen to scanners to the shitty neighborhoods I go into. So uh, I heard you guys talking about it. Uh, I better drive by and take a look. Glad I did, because they had no idea what it was either. Yeah, I am too. All right, thanks. Of course. Sir, do you need anything from me? I don't think so. All right. No, nope. sorry to put you in this. <laughs> All right, my sergeant's here. Hello. Hi there. I'm Greg Dickman. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Um, so here's our scene. Where is the scene? Oh, those trees. And the power box that's still alive. Um, I was hoping they weren't coming for me. Anyway. Um, what time do you think he uh, did it? He says around 6, 6.15-ish. 
And then after colliding, he took off to Elk Grove, and the car died over there. He ended up at, put out the call at Laguna and Houseman. So we went over there, contacted Elk Grove PD for the 901. He, and he tells us it didn't happen over there. It happened over on Consumers somewhere. I'm not sure where. I just hit a curb. Well, there was out, front end damage to the car and, and everything, so... So, the story is not bad enough, so uh, our chief will go to the past. And, uh, yeah. Um, and he told as far as the rear officer that he was parked out in front of his... We'll get, we'll get to that. So the 901, what did he, why did he say that he didn't stop? Or He didn't think that, he just thought he hit a curb. That's what I know. I don't know if he told anything more than Is he in there? Where is he at? Why did he say he didn't, he didn't stop? Uh, he said he, he only thought he kissed the curb. And by the time that he looked up to grab his phone, hit the curb, he had already made it past everything that he just did. Gotcha. And speaking with him, I don't smell any alcohol. I, his eyes aren't bouncing. He's not slurring his words. He's not unsteady in his feet. He's traveling at 50, 60 miles an hour. I can see how he can travel a couple hundred yards. All right. Unless I'm missing something here. I'm going to uh, stop my camera. All right, sir. So, just sitting in my patrol car and seeing all this, some some things aren't adding up for me. You know, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, based on that, I'm. You don't have to, but to rule out that you weren't drinking, that you're not intoxicated, or any of that, would you be willing to do a pass? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll be honest with you. I probably had a drink about 10 or 11 o'clock. Had a couple of beers. What time was that? Yesterday? Yeah. Okay. And then slept it off in my truck when I came home. And that was that? Okay. Um, so how many... How many what size beers are we talking about? Are we talking about a beer? Three tall cans. Three tall cans of what? PBR. PBR? Okay. Did you have any shots, any, no. anything other than that? Okay. Is there any reason you didn't tell me before when I was asking? Do you feel like you're intoxicated right now? No. Okay. So, I'm just going to have you walk down there with me. We'll just do the paths real quick and we'll go from there, okay? Okay, yeah. Have you taken anything else other than alcohol? Do you have pain or any, anything? Do you take pain pills? No. No? Okay. And you'll be glad to that you want to do it. Now, is that the car down there? No. No. Oh. The car was already towed and um, photographs were taken at CSI. It's sitting at their uh, maintenance yard, I believe. Okay. Good morning. Morning, Glenn. Morning, sir. Good. Kind of walked into something here. Um, 
so he said he was he is willing to do it voluntarily. But yeah, they go that route. Maybe uh, not. We're not sure. Yet. They're, they're, uh, Of this academy class and then watch Commander Sunlight. He just said, not, not Rudy's spot, though, since he's coming. Quick shift, Is that call entry? It is. Whether dispatch has made it up for them? Yeah. Not sure. Do you have. What's your. What's your date of birth? Uh, what was the question? What's, uh, what's your wife's date of birth? Congratulations on the promotion. I never got a chance to tell you congrats, Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Congratulations for going solo. That's good. <laughs> Are you assigned down to five then? I am. Five uh, B. I took uh, in coaching. Okay. Spot. Is he got Ryan got RT right? He went to RT. Uh. Ryan and Koji and Pearsall also went to gotcha. Gardner was my beat partner for a while. Where did he go? He got bumped. Good pastor came back. Oh, so she, bumped. so she bumped him and then he went to one with uh, Finley. Walking over it and all this other good stuff. And then I walked into this. I told the stories all the time. I told you, every day is different, right? <laughs> every day is different. <laughs> You didn't. You didn't lie. <laughs> he exited right here. Oh, right here. Okay. And is that part of the debris? I don't know how to use one of these. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Finally, they are getting around to testing Borrow It, even though it probably won't mean much at this point. Okay, sir. Take a deep breath and blow. Keep blowing, blow, blow, blow. All right. minutes and we'll do another one. Okay. Do you know the time to do the course? Or do you want me to? Uh, for this? Yeah. I wrote it down. Perfect. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, sir. Take another deep breath. Blah, 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 blah. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Take that. You want the straw? Well, it really here. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> they want me to stare. Okay, so he does have alcohol in his system, but it's under the legal limit. Uh, as far as what it was when he was driving, I don't sure. know. So wherever you guys want to take this, it's up to you guys. Let me confirm with my supervisors Absolutely. real quick. And so he. Is under the legal limit, but as far as when this happened, could have been very well over had we had he stayed here. Right. Um, so what? I don't know. Whatever they want to do with it. What we need to do is can you document the times real quick. I did. I got. I'm gonna grab my note back. Okay. Point oh four six and point oh four seven. I apologize for that. Yeah. I mean, we had one last week, of, right? None of us <laughs> like this stuff. No. Borrow it is under the legal limit, but he has had hours for his system to process the alcohol, so is almost certain that he was drunk at the time of the accident. Judging by the pictures of the damage, his story of bumping a curb has absolutely no credibility. And even if it did, protocol demands any accident in which a police car is damaged must be reported immediately which he failed to do. Until very recently in California, activities of this nature have been completely hidden from the public. Even now, police misconduct is only disclosed if it is sexual or dishonest in nature. Had Deputy Barrowit not lied, this would have been conveniently swept under the rug. As the investigation progressed, more information was brought to light. Barrowit at first only admitted to drinking three large cans of beer which shouldn't have happened at all while on duty or while operating a vehicle. In a bid for sympathy, Barrowhead brought up his marital troubles and confessed to stopping at a bar to drink two pints of beer. Immediately after leaving, he went to another bar where he continued drinking. Barrowhead could not recall when he arrived or when he left the bar. His next memory is of striking the curb. Unfortunately for him, video evidence emerged of him driving down the road at a different time than he had given in his previous statements. Deputy Glenn Barrowett was terminated from the department, although no further statements have been made concerning his case. While Barrowett was rightfully terminated, this video raises concerns that ethical or criminal behavior by law enforcement goes unpunished. The lack of transparency in these cases needs to be addressed if the public is to have any confidence in those who have sworn to serve and protect.